Um, they go to mode. Make sure you're set in radian. You're going to graph through or graphing here. We're going to do it in radian. So, um, window. Window. Let's, I'm going to use the same directions your book uses. So let's set our window for x, min, and max, negative 2 pi. Use the pi button. And positive 2 pi. Now, of course, as soon as you press enter, um, the two pi turns to a decimal, that's fine. Um, and then for our y, min, and max, I don't know, we're going to have to kind of play with that a little bit. Well, let's just start with negative 10 again. Okay, so everybody's looking at the same picture to start with, and then you can make adjustments as you need to. Let's new semester, new marker. <laughs> Let's um, sketch this. So we just type that equation in, y equals. <coughs> and let's see what happens. cosine, if you graph just the cosine, does it look like a sine curve? Have the characteristics of a sine curve? Yes. But as soon as you put this guy in there, that throws that off, right? And the function is no longer periodic. All right, let's try another one. Let's see what happens. Right now, we're not really learning anything. We're just making some observations. What about this one? Same sort of thing, only now we're multiplying. different, doesn't it? The part that you have sketched, and, and remember you haven't sketched the whole thing, <coughs> would you call that periodic? Now wait a minute, what does periodic mean again? Think about that. We talk about the period. <coughs> what do we mean? It repeats itself, right? Does this thing appear to repeat itself? Nope. Now wait a minute. Could I cut a chunk out and paste it here and get the picture? That's what periodic means. No. no. Don't get confused. What does this picture have? Symmetry, right? There's definitely symmetry. And that makes sense because x squared and cosine both have symmetry. If you make them together, it makes sense. They have symmetry, but it's not periodic. So this, again, is not a sinusoid. Okay? This is not an example of a sinusoid. We're going to look at some things that are. So put your calculators away now. And we are going to look at some things that are sinusoidal. In your homework, you have to do a few of these sketches, so I just wanted you to practice. I want you to consider these four equations. Thank you. 
look at these four equations. We're not going to graph them, we're just going to talk about it real quickly. Here is the question that's going to be asked in your homework. Are these sinusoidal? Now, certainly you could graph them and tell. Because again, what sinusoidal means is when you graph it, you see some kind of wave motion, like a sine curve or a cosine curve. Now, it might be shifted, it might be lifted up or down, but it's some kind of wave motion. Without sketching it, you actually can answer that question. It all hinges on the period. What is the period of this part of the problem? We talked about this yesterday. What's the period of a regular sine curve? 2 pi. Now, if you are new to our class, you want to make a note of that. The period of the sine is 2 pi. What about the period of the cosine? 2 pi. Yeah. So the period of a sine curve is 2 pi. Little review. What does that free do? Yeah. Amplitude. That doesn't even do with period, does it? That has to do with height? All right. What's the period of this guy? 2 pi. When the periods of both pieces match, and you are adding them together or subtracting them, adding or subtracting, when the periods of both pieces match, you're sinusoidal. Okay? So the answer to this one would be yes. Again, the question is simply, is this sinusoidal? If I were to graph it, would I see waves? And the answer is yes. Why? Because the period of each piece is the same. <coughs> sinusoidal? And the noun form of it is a sinusoid. So this would be considered a sinusoid, a sinusoid and its graph is sinusoidal. All right, how about the next one? Well, what's the period of this guy? This is good practice for us. What's the period of this guy? Well, it's a sine, so what's its period supposed to be? 2 pi. But what have we done? Be careful. We've multiplied it by a half, haven't we? Haven't we multiplied x by a half? Which means when I find the period, I'm going to take 2 pi and do what with it? Divide by a half. I divide by this number. To find the period, we divide by that number, remember? So 2 pi divided by a half is 4 pi. So the period of this first part is 4 pi. Now what about this part? All right, now we've multiplied by 2, so the period will be 2 pi divided by 2, which is just pi. Now, wait a minute. This piece has a period of 4 pi. This piece has a period of pi. So is it sinusoidal? No, because in order to be sinusoidal, the periods have to match. It's real easy. Don't make it hard. They have to match. They don't. So this one is a no. Oh, now, wait a minute. Do I really have to go through any work to answer this question then? What do I have to look at? Are these the same? Right? Because what is that 3 going to do? Change the period, right? What is this 2 going to do? Change the period, right? But they're different numbers. So when they change the period, what's going to happen? You're going to get a different answer. Does that make sense to you? The period for this one is going to be 2 pi over 3. The period for this one is going to be 2 pi over 2. Do they match? No. So this is going to be a no. What about this one? I don't even care what the periods are. Aren't they going to be the same thing? So this one is going to be a yes. 
So when you sit down to do this homework, which is going to take you about 10 minutes, you're going to look at the equation and you're going to say, oh, look, x and x. That's a yes. Look, x over 2 and 2x. Those are no's. And that's how you're going to proceed through. Okay? Because the question, are you sinusoidal, simply means, are your periods the same? Got it? Then the next chunk is we got to figure out what the periods of these things are. So the first question was, are you sinusoidal? We've answered that question. Now we're going to go back and we are going to find the period of each of these things. Now, I want, you to, I want to make sure you're clear on something. You can be periodic and not be sinusoidal. Sinusoidal means wave, 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 wave. Periodic means you've got some shape. It doesn't have to be waves. You've got some shape that keeps repeating itself. So for example, this would be periodic. But it is not sinusoidal because sinusoidal means this, right? And that's not the same thing. Periodic means you repeat. Any shape repeats. Sinusoidal means you have waves. These are all periodic functions. Your job now is to tell me, okay, what is the period? I don't care what the shape is. We already talked about shape. Shape is sinusoidal. Okay? Now we're talking about what is the period of each one individually. Well, you've kind of already done part of the work. Obviously, if the period of this is 2 pi and the period of this is 2 pi, then the period of the whole thing is 2 pi. Done. But what if the periods don't match? This second example, you told me the period of the first one was 4 pi and the period of the second one was pi. Now I want you to think about that for a second. You have a picture that repeats itself every pi units. So that means you're zero. At pi, it starts over again. At 2 pi, it starts over again. At 3 pi, it starts over again. 4 pi, 5 pi, and so on and so on and so on. That's what this guy's doing. He's repeating himself every pi. Now, this one is repeating every 4 pi. So he's doing stuff, and then at 4 pi, he starts over again. And then at 8 pi, he starts over again. So he's starting over again at these places. Is anybody following me? You see what I'm talking about? The answer to the question, when you put the two together, the answer to the question is the first place they both start over again. So they're both starting at zero. And then they're doing their own things. Where is the first place that they both start over again, 4 pi. So the period of this one, I got so much stuff in here, I mean, the period of this one is 4 pi. It is the first place that they both start over again. Each piece individually has a period. That tells you how far it is before it starts over again. Look at each piece individually and then decide where's the first place that they both start over again. And in this case, it was four pi. All right, let's do this next one. This is a little bit harder one. Okay, so now we're on this problem right here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. this is All right, so let's talk about again, review again. Let's find the period of each piece. We're doing this problem right here. 
first. We're going to find the period of each peak. Now remember, to find the period of a sine or a cosine, you take 2 pi and divide it by that coefficient. So the period of the first piece is 2 pi over 3. Now what does that mean? That means it starts at 0, and then it repeats itself. It starts over again at 2 pi over 3, and then where? Where does it start over again? <coughs> no, 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 no. Every 2 pi, yeah, 4 pi over 3. There you go, 4 pi over 3, and then 6 pi over 3, and 8 pi over 3. And we can carry this out as long as we want to. Um, I'm going to run out of room, so I will stop at 14 pi over 3. So this curve, whatever it looks like, you draw it, and at 2 pi over 3, you draw it again, at 4 pi over 3, you draw it again, every 2 pi over 3, it just repeats itself. Now, what's the period of this peak? Pi, because it's 2 pi divided by 2. The period is 2 pi divided by that number. So this period is pi, all right, so it starts at 0. And every pi, it repeats itself. Where's the first place they overlap? Now be careful. The first place they overlap is right here, isn't it? So what is the period of this big, long, hideous, ugly equation? The period is 2 pi. Every 2 pi, it's going to repeat itself. Write this last one. What's the period here? 4 pi. Okay, somebody already figured it out. Good job. This is the same as 1 half x. Don't be confused by x over 2. That's the same as 1 half x. So the period will be 2 pi divided by a half which is 4 pi. So that period is 4 pi. This is the same thing, right? So what's the period of this function? Since they're both 4 pi's, the period is going to be 4 pi. Now I'm going to do one more of those just to make sure you got it. And then we've got One more thing to do. All right, so here we go. that look like this. If I'm going to find the period of this thing, what does that period depend on? The coefficient in front of x. So, the coefficient, even though it's written differently than normally when I look at it, this is the number that's going to control the period, right? So what is the period of this part of the problem? 2 pi divided by 5. Which means this guy is going to repeat himself every 2 pi over 5. Does that make sense? So let's see. He's going to repeat himself at 2 pi over 5. What would be, oh, I gave it away. What would be the next one? 4 pi over 5. 6 pi over 5, and so on. Every this many units, this thing is going to repeat itself. How about this one? What's the period here? <coughs> 2 pi over 3. 
So every two pi over three, he is going to repeat himself. I don't know if I have enough there or not. Do I have a match yet? Is there a match up there? Mm -hmm. Because remember, that's what you're trying to do is figure out where they overlap each other. And where does that happen? At two pi. At two pi. Got to be careful they don't necessarily look alike, but they're both two pi's. So the period of this equation would be two pi, which means if you graphed it, whatever funky shape that thing had, if you graphed it, every two pi units, it would start repeating itself over again. Okay? All right. Quick recap then two questions basically in this entire lesson. The two questions that we answer are, is it sinusoidal? How do you answer that question? What do you look at? Is it period? And if you've got two, three, four, doesn't matter how many pieces you have, is it gonna be sinusoidal? They all have to have the same period, the individual pieces. Second question is, okay, here's this equation without graphing it, determine the period. How do you determine the period without graphing it? You look at the period of each individual piece again, and then what? Figure out where they match up, right? As you proceed through the curve, where are they going to overlap each other? Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's get your packet out. And I want you to turn to page six. This is your big packet, obviously, not the repeat packet. I want you to turn to page six. seen this stuff before uh, if they're new to our class. So here we go. Find the exact value of the cosine of 5 pi over 3. Okay, this is page 6. Everybody find it? All right. So here we go. How do we start? Who knows? What do we do first? Yes, Maya. Yeah, we're going to change. That's a radian measure. And we were perfectly okay. We're getting more comfortable with radians, Patty. We're getting more comfortable with radians, but we um, probably would still like to have this in degrees. So another really important thing, if you've not been exposed to this before, a really important thing for all of us to remember is that pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. So that's like 180 sitting there. 180 divided by 3 is 60 times 5 is 300. So this is the cosine of 300 degrees. Now, we're going to draw 300 degrees, right? And everybody remembers that when we draw an angle, we start right here. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to proceed around 300 degrees, which means I'll stop about right here. This is a 300-degree angle. What do I do next? I made my triangle, right? And my triangle is always part of the butterfly bow tie. So when I draw a triangle, no matter which quadrant I'm in, it's going to be one of those. Always one of those pieces. So I've got this piece right here. That's a 300 degree angle perpendicular right to the x-axis. How big is this? 60. That's my common sense. There's no rule there, no theorem. That's my common sense. 
Now I can label the sides of my triangle, right? What are the sides of my triangle going to be? Across from the 60 is? Root three, actually negative. I heard somebody say negative. Very, very good. Don't forget to make your negatives if, you, if they're appropriate. And anytime you're not in quadrant one, you're gonna be negative somewhere. I want the cosine. What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse or X over R. So the answer to the question is one half. Everybody okay with that? I know if you're new to it, it's a little bit overwhelming. Just hang tough. You'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Tangent 270, very special situation. What's special about 270? Patty? That are it's quadrantal. Very good. You even Sorry, remember, I the word. remember the word. No, you did. It's quadrantal. I know the type of it, just not the word. It's quadrantal. That means when I draw it, shoot, it's not part of the butterfly bow tie. It is on an axis. Who remembers how to handle that? What? Okay, so I think of a circle here, and my favorite circle has a radius of one. So this point right here that would be at 270 is the point zero, negative one. Which means x is zero and y is negative one and the radius is one. I'm doing tangent, so shoot, I gotta remember. So Katoa won't do it for me. I gotta remember my other definition of tangent. Y over X. Tangent is Y over X, which is, uh-oh, we have a problem. It's undefined. There is no tangent at 270. In other words, if I try to draw 270, I mean, if I tried to draw my tangent curve, what would happen at 270? There'd be an asymptote. Cosecant, 5 pi over 6. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can do this. What's pi? 180. 180. So we got 180 divided by 6, which is 30, times 5, which is 150. So we have the cosecant of 150 degrees. So I'm going to draw 150. So here we go. Butterfly bow tie piece. How big is my reference angle here? That's really important angle here at the origin. Root 30. Again, we don't memorize that. We figure that out. That's 30. So across from the 30 is 1. Anything negative in that picture? Root 3 is negative. We went left and up. X is negative, Y is positive. Cosecant, oh boy. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so cosecant must be hypotenuse over opposite. So the answer to the question is two. And you're all thinking, I wish you'd just shut up, Mrs. Ford. Soon I will, but we have a few more to do. We're not gonna get through the whole sheet. I only need a couple more. Cotangent, five pi over four. One eighty divided by four. Forty five times five. 225. So we're finding the cotangent of 225. 
Here we are in quadrant three and 25. Draw 225 degrees, butterfly bow tie. How big, right here, this is the angle that matters. This one right here, how big is it? 45. So now the sides of my triangle are what? They're different, because that's a 45. So it'll be one, one, root two. Negative. And the ones are both negative. Very, very good. We went left and down. X and Y are both negative. Cotangent. Reciprocal of tangent. Toa. Tangent. Opposite over adjacent. So adjacent over opposite, the answer to the question is one. Negative one over negative one. One. <coughs> Number two, last one we're going to do today. This is going to have one new word in it, one new vocabulary word, because we're going to the period amplitude a phase shift which is also called horizontal shift so this is phase shift also called horizontal shift vertical shift extra vertical shift and frequency. That's our new one that we've never talked about before ever. So we're going to hit that today finally. But let's go through and do what we know how to do first and then we'll talk about frequency. Period. We just spent all morning talking about period. This is a cosine. What's the period supposed to be? Every cosine is supposed to have a period of 2 pi. But we stuck a coefficient on the x, right? And what's that coefficient going to do? Divide the period. So your period is 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. <coughs> Amplitude. That refers to the height of the hill. Remember? Cosine up and down, up and down, up and down. Amplitude is supposed to be 1. But we put a multiplier in there, which is going to make it 3 times as tall. So our amplitude is 3. Now, gang, that's a negative. That negative does not affect amplitude. The negative is going to turn our picture upside down. If you put negative 3 here, I'm going to mark it wrong. Amplitude is not negative. Amplitude is positive. So is period. Phase shift or horizontal shift. Normally, a cosine, this, this would be your normal cosine curve. That's for the normal curve. That's what it's supposed to look like. But this one's been shifted. How has it been shifted? Pi over five to the right. So it's positive pi over five, or if you want to write right pi over five, that's fine. Whatever is added or subtracted to x, that's your phase shift. Subtracted goes right, added goes left. Vertical shift. Has this picture been picked up or down? No, because what does it not have? You can write none, you can write zero. What does it not have? Anything added or subtracted out here? Frequency is the reciprocal of the period. All right, frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So your frequency is simply 1 over pi. Okay? 
Now, I need somebody who's going to be here tomorrow to remind me to start with that sketch because I need to talk about this real quick. I want to show you what this means and I want to sketch this tomorrow. So, Daniel, are you going to be here tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Your job is when you walk through the door, Mrs. Ford, we have to sketch this Friday. Okay? But, no, 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 pack it up. I got to show you what this frequency thing means. Let me draw just quick two pictures. Two pictures here. Draw a little sign curve for you. Draw another little sign curve. You don't have to write this down, but I, I want you paying attention so you know what's going on. What is the period of this curve? Now be careful. Period means the chunk that you could cut out and just keep pasting. How long is the chunk that you would cut out and just keep pasting? Two. Two. So the period of this thing is two. All right, now look at this one. What's the period of this one? Two eighths, one four. Two eighths or one four. Okay. Now, frequency means take an interval one unit long. So right here, take an interval one unit long. How many periods get done in one unit? A half. A half. So your frequency is a half. Down here, I don't even have one unit drawn. One unit would be eight eighths. How many of these periods would I have drawn in eight eighths? Four of them? Yeah. So the frequency is four. See what happens? Frequency is always the reciprocal of the period. By definition, frequency is how many of these you get done in an interval one unit long. Okay? Now you're all enlightened. You may go out and enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you tomorrow. And Danielle, um, remind me. Okay. So I will. Uh, uh, you want to get that on? Uh, 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 no, you're so nice.